Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We welcome you to the house of the Lord. And uh, a lot of people are out this morning. It must be full of turkey. Full of turkey. You can't, you can't grow out there. But we're glad for you that are here. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Let's go to the prayer list. Sister Dorothy, Brother Jim, and Sister Fran, and Sister Cheryl, they all need physical healing. Sister Sandy needs strength, and uh, husband Charles healing, and grandson Ethan. Sister Jackie is not able to be here this morning. Her niece is bothering her bad. She continue to pray for uh, her husband, Chet, for a healing. And let's pray for a little more that God will open up the door. And uh, we'll just move on to the next step. Uh, Sister Carrie is back and healing. Sister Linda, her sister and brother and niece needs healing. Uh, Sister Colleen, healing and co-worker whose grandbaby Riley continue healing for her kidneys. Brother Tim, his sister's Alzheimer's needs healing and salvation for his family and prayer for a family in Kentucky. Continue praying for Sister Myra for a healing. Continue praying for Brother Bob, his brother, for salvation. Sister Vicki, family, healing, and salvation. Pastor Kathy, her legs, healing, and strength. Sister Lydia, family, healing, and salvation. Brother Tim just shared with me that his brother Bobby put request in for a friend of his who has uh, a, may have cancer. So let's continue to pray for that one. Let's pray for uh, Mike. Teacher Lima, he has cancer. We're asking God for healing. Yes. A Mill Street teacher from Philly, cancer, healing. Yes. Brother Bob, he's unable to be here this morning. He's got a cold. But continue praying for uh, his co worker brothers. Brother, that continue healing. Dawson, a tumor on the, on the heart, healing. Uh, we got a daughter in law, Shelby, that needs salvation. Yes. Okay. Brother Larry, Healing for uh, me, uh, Brother Todd from Texas. He had a uh, simple message. His wife, his uh, boss's wife, they just had a newborn baby. He's healing for the, 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 the mom and for the baby. Continue praying for the church and God will send in the lost and anointed musicians and singers. Let's continue praying for Israel, God's chosen people. Let's pray for our nation. It's in the mouth. President and those in the government. So let, we got so much to pray about. Does anybody else have a spoken request this morning? to the Lord in prayer as we pray over these this morning. Let's believe together this morning that God will move and touch. Come on, Brother Bob. Hallelujah. God is still in the healing business. Yes. Amen. I believe that. I believe that. I believe that. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come this morning in the name of Jesus. God, you know the need of every one on this prayer request. And Lord, we ask you to move and touch each and every one, your God. And Lord, heal those that are sick. And save those that are lost, your God. And Lord, we believe, believe this morning for healing, your God. We thank you, dear Lord, for all that you've done. We thank you, dear Lord, for those that's made it home on the traveling over the weekend, your God. And Lord, we just ask you this morning to move upon us with you. God, lift us up this morning, dear Lord, as we come into your house to praise you, to worship you. And God, we thank you for everything, dear Lord. Move upon and be with this uh, granddaughter this morning, dear Lord, as she's about ready to have a baby. Lord, let everything go good. And we just thank you this morning. We're going to give you praise. We love you and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a good hip hop of praise for that. Amen. Amen. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. We were having technical problems. We had to order another part. The part that came in wasn't the right part. So we had to send it back, or going to send it back and reorder the new part. But if you got your songbooks, turn with me into page 199. Amen. Amen. Come on, Sister Linda. Amen. I shall not be moved. Jesus is my Savior. Eh? How many of you would claim Him as your Savior this morning? Amen. Amen. Well, Jesus is my Savior. I shall not be moved. Yeah! 
I think that song ought to be sang in every church, every every service. It is God. Because I'm sorry, there's a lot of people that are being moved. Amen. They've been moved. They allow everything in the world to take them out of church. They let everything in the world and move, move them away from Jesus. But I'm glad today. Amen. No matter what comes my way, I've got my mind made up because nothing but the blood of Jesus matters. Look, turn to page 270 in your songbook this morning. Nothing but the blood. But if what can wash away my sin? Well, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Well, what can make me whole again? Well, nothing but the blood of Jesus.
So they made it home this morning. We just thank the Lord for that. Brother Vaughn's family left about 1 o'clock yesterday, got home last night at 10. So a lot of families were traveling the road yesterday. Just a lot of them had to go home for rest and be up and ready to go to work uh, Monday morning. So but we just thank the Lord. We had the time of fellowship with our family for a while and got to see them. And uh, it's like everything else, it comes and goes. Now, now Christmas, and we, we got to get all hyped up for Christmas, and it'll come and go. Amen. But uh, we just thank the Lord that one of these days he's coming. Amen. 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 And we're going to go with him, to be with him forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And I just look for that. But the dead sister Myra, come and bless us this morning from the song. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God is good. All the time. All the time. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. My words. They start singing. Honey, check their mics and see if they need turned up. I don't know. Thank you. Lord. God is good this morning, folks. Amen. Yes, He is. I tell you what, if I listened to my flash this morning, I would have been mad. Yeah. But, but we didn't. <laughs> I'm glad we did. But you know what? We have to overcome our flesh. Come on. You Amen. know, a lot of times we have to say, okay, flesh. Hey, you're going behind me because my spirit man's rising up uh, and I need right. to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. So we can let, let our flesh talk to us or we can allow the spirit to talk to us. It's our choice. Come on, sir. It's our choice. So I thank God for that. Tonight, we were singing this song last night and I know that, that we sing it uh, quite often. I've come too far to look back. You know, I've, this is the end of the year. Yeah. And, you know, I've come too far to look back at, at 2023. I'm looking forward to 2024. Amen. I believe God's got blessings for us that we can't even imagine in our own yeah. natural yeah. minds. I believe God's got spiritual blessings that he's going to pour upon us as we follow him. And as we do his word and do his work, I believe God's got great and mighty things to do for us. Yes, come on. So I've come too far to look back. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Yes, amen.
give him a clap of praise. Amen. Some of you do not know that uh, there's a lady, a sister who was on the wall there, Sister Gracie. I think it was about this time of the few years ago she passed away. Yep, next month. And uh, she loved it to echo that uh, song. And every time we sing that song, I can still hear Sister Gracie and Sister B is singing that song. And just uh, blaring it out. But you know what? Today they are on higher plane. Higher ground today, dear Lord. And, uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't ask the Lord to let them come back for nothing. Nobody. Amen. Because we're going to join them one of these days in that heavenly place. Amen. Thank you, singers. Thank you, musicians. Amen. I'm looking for that time. And that time is right around the corner, church. It is closer than we could even imagine. Amen. We may not even get out of service to this morning. May not even get done with the preaching. The Lord may come and take us home. Right. That'd be all right with me. Be all right with me. All right with us. Amen. Amen. I'm ready no matter what. We have set the, the, the good example for the rest of our kids. And, and that's their choice. Uh, somebody said that this morning. It's a, their uh, choice. It's a choice. And uh, I thank God for that. Amen. Got your Bibles? Turn with me in the book of Matthew, chapter 7. And I want to start with the 15th verse. Matthew, chapter 7. Amen. This is Jesus speaking. I want to read 15 down to 20. Amen. Matthew, chapter 7, starting with the 15th word. Verse, and this is Jesus. He's telling them, he said, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inward, inwardly they are raving wolves. In other words, they're hungry. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Precious God and Heavenly Father, as we come again this morning, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, your word is already anointed, and I'm asking you to help me bring forth your word. Bless you, Lord. God, that it'll be food for our souls, and it'll help us to, to lead us, and to tell us, dear Lord, that there is a better way than the, the way that the world describes, the world says. You said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh to the Father but by you. Yes. And Lord, I thank you this morning. And I give you praise this morning for your word. Yes. Help us to write and divide it. Yes. And we'll give you the praise, we'll give you glory. And everybody said, Amen. 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 And Amen. Only by being connected. When you and I are connected to the true vine, who is our true vine? Jesus Christ. Yes. Can we bring forth fruit that is right for a repentant heart. Amen? Amen? I want to talk about your source determines your fruit. Amen. Your source determines your fruit. John chapter 15, 1 and 2 says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. Yes. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Back up in verse 20, as we read, Jesus said that you shall know them by their fruits. What a powerful statement that, that truly is. And all of our dealings with man this is the guiding principle by which we can judge character 
And see into the window of the heart, mind and soul of every man, by looking at the fruit that is brought forth from the life of an individual. Yes. We can truly see whether they are rooted. We can truly see whether they are grounded and the true vine, Jesus Christ, or they're connected to the wrong vine. In the 15th verse of uh, Matthew chapter 7, Jesus warns us that they will, will come into our midst, rabious wolves, hungry and hunting uh, for those that are weak in the faith. Uh, and to, to every wind who, who is accepted every wind of doctrine, whether we survive their attacks or fail prey to their onslaught, will be determined by our ability to recognize their wolf spirit and when they come around. You will know it by their talk, whether they are truly hooked to the right body. Come on, church. Amen. Amen. Come on. We will know when we're around them uh, that their prey to their own slot will determine by our ability to recognize their will spirit when they come around. It is a foolhardy Christian who will trust everyone. I, I don't know about you. We all should probably know them. They may be even in our family. I've seen them. I've heard some of the, the, the comments from people thinking, Lord, God, help their souls. They're not really, they're listening to every doctrine, every preacher, everything that comes across TV, everything that comes across two face. Come on. Come on. And they believe everything about that. Amen. But they need to do what the Lord says. Amen. It is a full and individual preacher, including every preacher who comes into the church. It is a wise Christian who will try the spirits yeah, to yeah. see whether they are of God or not. Amen. Yeah. A true man and woman of God will try the spirits yeah. and say, say, that is the gospel. Come on. The kind of spirit that we portray and the fruits that we bear will totally depend upon our source. From that source, we get our attitudes <laughs> and disposition. Jesus said we will we that we get in our behavior from either one of the two sources. Now in John chapter 8, verses 42 to 44. Jesus said unto them, If God were our, your Father, you would love me. For I have proceeded forth and come from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and avoid not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. So then we come to the most important part of the matter this morning, church. How can we know those among us who are raving wolves and those who are lambs in God's oh. pasture? The answer is very plain and simple. We must become fruit inspectors. Come on. Come on. We must look at the things that are brought forth from the life of an individual to determine whether they are connected to the true vine or to the root of bitterness, the devil himself. Mm -hmm. Come on. If you go down further there, where we read there, and I didn't read that. The Bible says in verse 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of the Father which is in heaven. Not everybody that goes to church is saved. That's true. Not everybody that goes to church is going to heaven. That's true. Come on. Not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, did we do this, do that, is going to heaven. Come on. Right. The Word tells us they are not going to. But he that doeth the will of God. He that doeth the will of God. Understand this. The Scripture says in no uncertain terms that he that is connected to the true vine will bring forth fruit. 
the repentant heart that loves Jesus has the love of Jesus within and is striving to become more like Jesus every day. I thought as I was reading that, he said, every branch in me that bear fruit, not fruit, he taketh away. That means that everybody is connected to him. Come on. Well, at one time or another, everybody is connected to him. Yeah. But not everybody's bringing forth fruit. And when he said, if he will not bring forth fruit, and every branch that bear fruit, he purges, but they, every branch that in me that bear not fruit, he taketh away. Yeah. Amen. That shows this church that everybody that says, Lord, Lord, is not going to enter into heaven. Amen. Everybody that's connected to Jesus is not, come on, on his side. He said, every branch, every branch, come on, church, is there. He will take it away. He will cut it away and throw it in the fire. Amen. Amen. Jesus, we've got to understand that Jesus loves us enough that he would die for us. Amen. You won't have to worry about the one who truly loves love Jesus becoming a backbiter. Oh, you won't have to worry about them becoming a gossiper. Oh, you won't have to worry about them being a troublemaker or a thorn in the side of the church body. Come on. That one who loves Jesus is too busy being about the Father's business. Oh, yeah. Hello. They are, they are listening to the voice of God. They are following the leading of the Holy Spirit. They don't have time or the indication to cause problems for anyone else. Come on. Why? Because they are focused on getting the ministry of the Lord in operation. They are concerned about the church, the community, the lost souls. They are consumed with the work that Jesus has called them to do and don't have time to sit and think of ways to get even with those who hurt them. Come on, amen. They don't have time to plan and scheme on how to have their own way. They don't have time to think of things uh, to complain about. Oh, come on, church. A true vine will do the work of the Lord. A true Christian that loves Jesus Christ is not concerned about that stuff. Uh -huh. If there is something that needs repairing, if there is a situation that needs correcting, if they have a difference with other Christians, they won't stew over it. Oh. And fire up a spirit of contention or division. They will bend their knees before the Lord asking God for wisdom yes. and for direction of which what, what should be done so that no one is hurt in the process. Yeah. If there's work to be done, church, they won't sit in the corner hiding from it. Okay. They will jump in with both feet and put all of their energy and ability to work and to get the work done. Amen. I am convinced that lazy, uninspired people are not connected to the true Bible. While I know that everyone deserves and must have a time of rest after the work is done, I don't believe that God ever called one person to be a couch potato. There is always, uh, there is always too much to do for anyone to sit around doing nothing. Amen? Luke 2, and 9, Luke 2 and 49 says this. Luke 2 and 49. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my Father's business? Then in John 4 9, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. What am I saying today, church? I'm saying that your source determines your fruit. Amen? These are the words of Jesus. Jesus is the true vine. And those who are connected to the true vine must live upon the same source. Principles in the life of the vine. If Jesus had to be doing the Father's business and had no time to lie around but had time to be working while it is day, what makes us think that we can do any less? I cannot but believe that those who are totally self-centered, who live their lives day to day, only to get things and bring pleasures to themselves, without ever giving up other time and talents to the work of Jesus Christ, 
I'm sorry, but are not connected to the true life. Either they have allowed the cares of life to sever their branch from the vine, or they have connected to the wrong vine. I'm also convinced that we are always connected to either one or the other. Let me remind you again, John 15, 1. I am the true vine, and my Father is the husband. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that bear fruit, he purchases, and it may bring forth more fruit. The Father in heaven today, right now, is constantly, thank God for it, he is constantly trimming and working with the branches of the true vine. Yeah. He's still working with us. Yeah. Sister Sandy, he hasn't gave up on us. He's yeah. still working on us. Amen. He's still working on us. Those branches are you and I. Yes. If we love Jesus, we are not a finished work, but a work in progress. Because Philippians 1 and 6 says, Be confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. I thank God when I got up this yes. morning, Sister Mata, that he's still working on me. He's yes. still tripping my branches. He's still making me into what He wants me to be. The second verse tells us that the Father will remove every branch that doesn't bring forth fruit. He will also purge and purify and sanctify those branches that are bearing fruit so that they can be even more productive. That's what the Lord wants out of us. Amen. He wants us to be more productive than what we are. Have you felt the pruning shears of the Heavenly Father lately? Have you, have you felt Him cutting away a rotten attitude here and a festered temper there and a sore head here, a lame excuse there, a swollen, swollen head here or a sour disposition there? Huh? Come on. He's cutting away. Amen. I thank God that when I gave my heart to the Lord, amen, there was still there was those certain words that I still hung on to. But thank God, He still He started cutting those out of me. Come on, Come on church. Amen. Just think of it this way. The ministry for the Lord that you are doing now is producing some fruits. <coughs> The Father is just getting rid of those parts of us that hinder our own growth and development into useful and productive branches. He is getting rid of every hindrance because Isaiah 28, 13 says that the word of the Lord was, was, un, was unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little that they might go and fall backwards and be broken and scared and taken. See, God is still constantly every day, every day working on us. Yes, He is. Because we are a work in progress. Amen. Come on. We are a work in progress. We are connected to the true vine. We will be growing. We will be changing. And we will be in the process of becoming more like Christ. Mm -hmm. There are many examples of those who enter the doors of the church who are not connected to the true vine. They are connecting to the lying vine of the, their father, the devil. These are self-proclaimed saints of God who walk into a church claiming to be a super Christians while it is entirely possible that these wolves can walk about devouring the weak. The attentive and the unlearned is a in, in a quiet manner, most of the time the opposition is true. They are very outspoken and boisterous and bragging all the time and self-proclaiming of their great spirituality. And they want everyone to know how great they really are. You ever ran into those kind of people? I have. Yeah. Amen. You just want to knock their block off. <laughs> huh? Just look around and in almost any church, in almost any service, you will see those who are in one 
of these three conditions. What are those conditions? I'm going to tell you. Number one, those who, whose connection to the true vine is strong. They will be working, praising, and doing whatever is necessary and won't care about recognition because they are doing it unto the Lord. Amen. Then there's the other two, the second one. Those whose connection to the true vine is weak and dying. They will come to church, but they won't be involved in any ministry. They are too busy with their own lives and the things that they want to do. If they are busy, they will want to be noticed. They will want to have the praise of the people and God gets very little glory from, the, from their sparse fruit. And some of these are self-proclaimed prayer warriors. And they will make sure you know it. Come on. Some are convinced that their great talents are God's gift to the world. And that the world, the whole world should be ever so thankful that they exist. For certainly the church could not exist without them. Come on. I can name names and you know some of them. Come on. There are those who are convinced that they know more than any preacher or teacher could ever know. And yet, they don't know how to interpret what they know to help other people. The last column, number three. Then there are those who are definitely, definitely connected to the wrong mind. These, dear Christian brothers and sisters, are in the church only to see and be seen, to have their way at all costs. Don't care much at all for any type of real ministry. They love to gossip, they love to backbite, to gripe, to complain, to see every fault and find every excuse not to get involved or be a part of anything that requires something of them. They, those in the first condition, I thank God for you all. I know that you love Jesus. You love your pastor. You love your church. You love your fellow Christians. And you love the work of the Lord. I can see your fruit. So can everyone else who cares to examine your life. Come on. God has continued changing you and you are constantly getting better. You are connected to the true vine and it shows. Stay close to God and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. And heaven will be your reward. Those are the second condition. I thank God for you also. I know that deep within your heart there is the heart of a servant for Christ. The battle that rages within you is the battle of your very soul. And only you can decide the outcome. Even all of your faults and all of your failures, Jesus still loves you. Amen. Come on. The Father is even now doing all He can to prove these bad habits and attitudes from your life. If you choose to follow Christ, you will one day become connected completely and the fruits that you bear will be plentiful and they will be sweet. Hold on to the Lord and never give up. But there is a warning. Unless you repent of your ways and turn back to Jesus, the Father will have no option but to cut you from the vine and allow you to die. He will not allow you to continue in sin and failure without consequence. The consequence of sin is always death. Don't let that happen. Get back to your first love and come to Christ with all your heart. And to those in the third condition, those connected to their own mind, I thank God that you are here too. You are trending on dangerous and deadly ground Satan is going to ultimately destroy you if you don't change your ways and come to Christ. Come quickly. Don't wait. Each day you stay connected to the vine of the devil, his connection grows stronger. The only power that can cut you from Satan's vine is the power of the cross, the blood of Jesus that we sang about this morning. Jesus died for you. He does not desire that you should perish with your father, the devil. 
I know that these are strong words, but your soul is too important to not tell the truth. If you haven't been cut off from the true vine yet, you shall be cut off soon. God will not tolerate bitterness, confusion, to come from wolves in the church for long. He will cut you off and the word Ichabod shall be written across the door of your heart, meaning that the Spirit of the Lord has departed. I am happy that you are here in church. For at least here you can hear the truth. Amen? Amen. Jesus said in John 8, 32, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, as I get ready to close, do you wish to really, do you wish to be really free from the bonds of a bad attitude, a gossiping tongue, a backbiting spirit, or a sinful heart? I'm here to tell you this morning you have heard the truth. This message has been for you more than anyone else. If you will heed the call of the Holy Spirit as He is calling you to an altar of repentance and acceptance of the Lord Jesus Christ, then the truth that you are hearing will make you free. Freedom from the production of rotten fruit and freedom from the bonds of Satan will be yours if you will obey God right now. Finally, I want to ask everyone this question. Which of these conditions are you in right now? Are you fully connected to the true vine and bearing the fruit of righteousness that came from a repentant heart? Are you losing your grip on Christ and feeling the hand of the Father as He is gently pruning you and trying to make you productive? Have you lost your connection to Christ without even realizing it? And now you find yourself bound to the life that Satan is dictating for you. Thank God if you are connected. Pray for a stronger and more productive con uh, 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 connection. Or seek God with all your heart so that he may put an end from sin and bring new life and a more productive life. Which of the vines are you connected to right now? Make sure it is the true vine. That your life is bringing much more fruit into the kingdom of God. This is not a message that a lot of people would want to hear. I'm not a man pleaser. I'm here to tell the truth to those that will be watching. I'm hoping you're watching. It's sad to see the fruit is not being plentiful in people's lives. I've been pastoring for over 23 years and I've seen them come and I've seen them go. I've seen them want to take over the church and I've seen them want to destroy the church. It's sad that people are just plain church. God don't want people just to play church. He wants them to get in. I'd rather say this, either get in or get out. Come on. God is getting a church ready. A remnant that's ready. Yes. Amen. Amen. That will do the work for Him. And your source determines your fruit. And I want to hear the words one day, Brother Tim, well done. Amen. I don't want to get up here and, and preach something to bring in the crowd and that they'll tickle their ears. If that's, if that's, if that's, if that's what I'm going to do, I'll resign this morning. Turn it over to somebody else. But I want to preach because I'm concerned about souls. Yes. I see too many souls are playing church. And they're not really truly sold out to God. Not everybody's going to shout like everybody else. I know nobody, everybody else is not going to praise God like uh, maybe I praise God. But when you see no, nothing at all in their lives, nothing moving, it's sad. It's sad.
It breaks your heart. But I'm thankful for those that are truly connected to the vine because you can see their fruit. Because we are to be fruit inspectors. Yes. They want to work for the Lord. They want to do things for the Lord. They don't want to be put on the pedestal. Amen. I don't want to be put on the pedestal. You start putting me on the pedestal, I'm going to tell you no. Don't put me on the pedestal because I can fail. Fail you, I can fail God just like anybody else can. But I thank God when I woke up this morning, amen, that He's still trimming and pruning things in my life. Amen. amen. He said, we are a work in progress every day. Amen. That God wants to change in our lives. Even there's things that, you know, that we hide. You know, but God sees it. He knows all about you and I. Absolutely. We can't hide it. We can try to hide it from one another, but God sees it also. Yeah, Let's just quit trying to hide it. Let's just admit it to God and say, God, you know my faults. He already knows your faults. Yeah. He's looking for people to, for, with a repentant heart. Yeah. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. I've failed you. Amen. Amen. Church, be careful of those that come in. They come in all dressed up in the fine suits. Amen. But their raving was inside. You know, I thought as Brother Tim and Sister Meyer were singing, and then Sister Linda got up and sang. You know, there's a lot of churches, I guess they can afford it, but I don't know. They met all the, the, the people. But they'll bring in group, groups after groups. Yeah. Twice a month, if not more. Yeah. You know. And I thought, Lord, we've got some of the greatest singers right here. We don't need to bring in groups. That is anointed of God. Can sing. Why? Because I see the fruit. Amen. Amen. I love you all this morning very dearly. And I know that God has something planned for us in this church. Yes. And we got to just keep our own press on. Amen. But it looks doom and looks like, you know, people are bailing out on us. That's all right. We're going to continue pressing on. Amen. Because God has something good. Sister Margaret and Tim say, I've, I've come too far. Right. I've come too far to look back. Amen. My brother don't go, it won't hinder me. I'm going to go on for the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But I look around and I see the fruit. And I thank God for the fruit that He has given us. And, you know, we're going into Thanksgiving a week or yet. And I'm thankful for this church. I'm thankful for the people that God has sent us our way. Thankful that there's times when I was busy and I come up to the church and the church is already mowed, the yard's mowed. The man, somebody mowed the yard and took that, took that off of my bird. I, I'm thankful. Amen. Yes. Amen. So many different things we, we, we overlook, but we ought to be thankful for it. Yes. Amen. So many people want the big blessings, the big things to be thankful for. No, I'm thankful for the little things. Those little things mount up to be great things Amen. in God's eyes. <clears throat> when we become thankful of those little things, mm -hmm. God will reward us of big things. Amen. Amen. But I'm glad for you that are here this morning. And there's others that are unable to be here. I'm glad for them. Amen. But every church is sadly there is. And then in, in every church there is those three categories. Some are truly hooked to the vine. Some are kind of, uh, then there's others just come to church. But they're not really connected. I want to be connected. Amen. Yes. Amen. If I'm going to play church, I'll just stay home by church. Yeah. Amen. But I want to be with what God said, not forgetting to assemble yourselves together. Yeah. I know that the holidays, the Thanksgiving and Christmas, you know, that's when the church gets hurt. 
because we have family in, and then we use that as an excuse not to come to church. Sorry. I've been doing this long enough. Amen. Amen. It ain't nothing new to me. But if your family came in, you know what my mom and dad did when family came in? They said, you can either go to church with us or stay here. We're going to church. Yeah. Amen. Most likely they went to church with mom and dad. That's the way we need to be. Amen. You know? But we're not all alike. Yeah. Amen. But I love you this morning. Amen. Brother Bob, can you get a song? Good sister Linda. Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning, dear Lord. This message is not to be meaningful to anybody, but it's to be preached to help them. That if they're slipping and sliding away from you without realizing it, they need to come back. I thank you, dear Lord, for this church, as I've thanked you many, many times, and I thank you for the fine folks that you've sent our way. But I know that I know there's greater days ahead. Yes. Sister Myra preached a message a few years ago, the best is yet to come. Yes, yes, yes. I still hang on to that, believe in it. But you've still got something great for this church. Lord, you didn't bring us here, give us, bless us with this facility for nothing. But you gave it to us to grow in you and to preach the truth and get the truth out there. Lord, help each and every one of us under the sound of my voice and those that will be watching us. Lord, that they inspect their own fruit. Check their own lives out. And that they're not listening to every wind and doctrine that comes their way. But they are connected to the true vine, which is Jesus Christ. Find yourself and pray this morning as they come and sing a song. They will please. Find yourself a place. Amen.
Shake hands, love one another. We'll see you back here Thursday, if not before.